everybody so welcome back to my channel first of all and welcome back to monthly favorites it's been a while since i did one of these so i have a whole lot of things to talk about today i basically have two months worth of favorites jammed into this video so no doubt it's going to be a long one i hope you're all sitting comfortably i have loads of skincare products for some reason that i've been trying and new things that i've really been loving so let's just start with skincare and um, the first one's actually a tanning product this is from saint tropez i do love a good saint tropez tanning product they tend to just do the things that work best for me uh, this is the Everyday Tinted Body Lotion, so it's kind of like a gradual tan, but with a tint as well. And they do a product similar to this, which is just tinted, but doesn't have any actual tan in it. And I love using that for days when I have my legs out and I want a bit of colour in them when they're just generally looking a bit pasty. And I haven't had time to tan the night before. So this is basically that product, but with a gradual tan in it as well. And I do love the formula of the saint Gradual Tan anyway. Um, so putting the two together just made for a really amazing product. So I really like this. The colour is beautiful, especially the kind of instant colour that it gives you. It just looks so natural and subtle. A few kind of face bits. I've been using a new cleanser. Actually, I've been using two new cleansers. Um, I've kind of rotated these into my routine. And the first one from Elemis, this is the Biotech Skin Energizing Cleanser. I kid you not, I have been using this now for, it's going on two months. I've used it every single day. And if you can see, there's just literally less than a centimetre of this gone, which I'm so shocked by, I'm amazed by it really. I honestly don't see myself running out of this Ever. It might last me a year, a couple of years, so you're definitely getting your money's worth with this one. Um, but the actual cleanser itself is kind of like a foaming cleanser, which isn't something I'm used to liking. I generally stay away from foaming cleansers as a rule, but this one doesn't have any of the nasties like SLS in it. It has no irritants in it, and it actually feels incredibly smooth. I'd kind of describe it more of a lather than a foam. It just kind of lathers up beautifully on your skin, and it doesn't strip my face at all, which is kind of rare for a foaming cleanser because I do have dry skin. But it for the smell if nothing else it's so deep and intense it's kind of a bit sound or woody i love using this in the mornings i find it really wakes my skin up um and just as a second cleanse as well once i've kind of taken all my makeup off i think it's just an amazing cleanser so i've been loving this one this month and then in combination with that i've also been using this cleansing balm which is from rmk it's called the moist cleansing balm i know some of you guys out there probably hate the word moist um but it does feel very moist it's a very hydrating product number one thing i love about it though is that it has a lid so it's a cleansing balm, but it doesn't have a screw off top. It has a little pop-up lid, which I think is genius. I think that's so good because I always lose the lid or I kind of have to awkwardly screw it back on again while I have cleanser in my hand. So the design of this bottle is just amazing. And then the actual cleanser itself is this really pretty kind of pink color. It's rose scented, but not in a very artificial way. It's got a very kind of natural, beautiful rose smell. It smells kind of sweet and fruity. It smells great. Again, I love a good smelling skincare product, but the actual cleanser is a really kind of oily one it definitely breaks down into an oil the second you kind of put it in your hands and on your face so this does an amazing job of taking off makeup and it's one of the few cleansing balms that actually emulsifies when you add water to it I find a lot of the ones that are very oily tend to just stay oily and they don't emulsify but this one as soon as you put water on your face it kind of turns into a milk which I think is really really great so this has been my kind of makeup removal cleanser of choice this month and then also for makeup remover I've kind of done this in a really odd order I should have started with this this. I've been using the Chanel eye makeup remover. I was kind of skeptical about this because honestly who's going to be paying £23 for an eye makeup remover but the first time I used this I actually kind of nabbed it from Susie's house. She had one on her bathroom counter and I needed to take my eye makeup off so I just used it and it took it off so easily. I'm not the kind of person that really takes makeup off before I cleanse my face. I tend to just sort of use a cleanser and melt everything down and then take the last scraps off with eye makeup remover but this you can actually use first and it just breaks everything down it just takes all your makeup off it's amazing and I kind of find myself using this on my eyes and then taking it down to the rest of my face too because it just breaks down makeup so well so I think it's a bit of an investment definitely more of a pricey skincare item but if you are looking for a really really amazing eye makeup remover this one has just blown everything else out of the water for me I've been using a new eye cream as well this month I've been using the Charlotte Tilbury eye cream I've kind of wanted this for a really long time and then I did a Charlotte Tilbury order sometime last month and got a few new things and this has been one of my favorites it's really impressed me I'm a big fan of the magic face cream as it is so this is kind of just the same thing but in an eye cream it's very concentrated and very very rich it's super hydrating amazing if you have those kind of dry patches under your eyes and sort of flaky skin around there but the surprising thing about this which I was kind of worrying about is that it doesn't disrupt your concealer it doesn't make your makeup smudge it basically sinks in and then it stays 
put all day so there's no problems with kind of smudging and makeup running with this underneath it so it just does such a good job of hydrating my eyes but making everything else go on perfectly on top and I guess that's down to Charlotte Tilbury being a makeup artist obviously all her skincare products are kind of tailored to making your makeup look its best usually I'm kind of skeptical of makeup artists and makeup brands that bring out skincare but honestly if you haven't tried this range do so it's definitely another pricey one but it's so worth it the products are absolutely beautiful I've been using a new kind of moisturizing combo and these are actually both oil based products really really into oils at the moment and um, they're both from Dauphin Paris and the first one is the rose oil this is the rose aromatic oil I think I saw this in a Lisa Eldridge video a few months ago and of course anything that Lisa says to buy is worth buying so this one I've been using in the evening underneath my moisturizer and then the actual moisturizer I've been using this is the eight flower nectar oil cream and this is a really cool product it's actually an oil based cream so as you can tell this is a tiny tiny little pot because you need just the smallest, smallest amount. I mean, just tapping your finger into it is gonna give you enough for your entire face, basically. It's a super rich moisturizer, so probably not the best for oily skins, but if you do have dry, very dehydrated skin, this is just so beautiful. I really enjoy putting this on my face. And it's actually a great one for really working in as well. If you like to do some facial massage, which is so great for your skin, it has so many benefits, and is probably something I should do more often. It kind of just stays slippery on your skin for a bit longer because of the oil base um, and it just makes it a lot easier to kind of work into your face so I love this product. The last skincare favourite I have kind of goes against everything that I believe in when it comes to skincare but I'm going to mention them anyway because they are amazing and they're the Clinique Take the Day Off Micellar Cleansing Towelettes. These are towelettes, they're not wipes. If you watched my Kylie Jenner lip kit haul and kind of try on first impressions video, I use these to take all the lipsticks off in between trying the different colours and I think the main takeaway from that video, forget the Kylie lip kits, is that these wipes are amazing at removing makeup. They just took everything off so easily and I tried a few different things out. I tried some Bioderma and some eye makeup remover and they were just no match for these. So seriously heavy duty if you wear a lot of makeup up, um, and if you really struggle to get your makeup off with just kind of micellar waters alone I think these are incredible um, so these are definitely just an option for days when I'm wearing a lot of makeup and I have to take the bulk of it off before I go to cleanse and also for kind of lips watching videos as well I think this is what they're going to be mainly used for so yeah really like those surprisingly talking about face wipes who would have thought so speaking of the Kylie lip kits I think it's only right to kind of give you a little update um, and I was wondering how to do this so I kind of thought I'd just throw it into a favorites video having tried them now for a good kind of month, month and a half, maybe longer than that, I have to say I'm not totally wowed by them. There are definitely other liquid lipsticks out there that just perform better as a whole. Although there are some things about these that I think are amazing and really brilliant. The first one is probably the colours. These three have turned out to be my favourites, which I think were probably my favourites as well in the initial first impressions video. So 22, love it. Best red kind of terracotta orange lipstick ever. True Brown I love as well, which is a real surprise to me because this is the one I thought I would like the least. Um, it's a very dark, dark brown lipstick, but I think it's beautiful it's really amazing um, and then of all the lighter kind of nude shades I think it's Candy K that I like the most a couple of them I've just not even tried I've completely forgotten about um, but I've been using these a fair amount I think they are good lipsticks but if you're living in the UK it's probably not quite worth the hassle of having them shipped over and then also having to buy them online which is just the most kind of heart-wrenching nervous experience of my life it just is just not worth it. It actually turned out to be the lip liners that I like the most I wish you would do these separately and you didn't have to buy them together Together because the lip liners are pretty amazing. There's still a few shades that I don't have but honestly I don't think I'm going to put myself through that again so those colours will be the ones that I'm sticking with. Speaking of liquid lipsticks though there is one this month that I have been so so into. I actually used this in my get ready with me video this month so you probably would have seen it already. Um, it's from Giorgio Armani and it's called, I always forget the name of this, it's the Lip Maestro in the shade 500 and this is just the most pretty kind of natural your lips but better pink it's been my kind of everyday go-to color this month it's a liquid lipstick that definitely has a kind of setting quality to it it sets down and it lasts really well but it's also very creamy very very weird and I was actually thinking I hadn't ever tried anything like this before but then I was looking at my lipstick drawer and I realized that this is very very similar to the new Revlon 
matte liquid lipsticks, I think that's what they're called. They basically have the exact same texture and formula and feel to them, so they stay on your lips, they look very matte, but they're also very creamy and they feel very moisturising too, so if you're looking for a kind of more drugstore alternative to these, definitely check out the Revlon ones. So let's talk about a few base products. Um, I'll start with a primer. I actually have two primer favourites. The first one is probably going to be no surprise to you guys, I'm sure you're all waiting for me to talk about this, and this is the newest launch from Hourglass. This is the ambient light correcting primer. Every single thing that Hourglass do in the ambient range I absolutely love. You've heard me talk about it so many times that I know you guys are all sick of it but the powders, the blushes, the bronzer, everything. So when I saw that they were bringing out a primer I was just so excited. I think there are three shades. Um, I had the shade Luminous Light here which turned out to be my favourite. For some reason I thought this was going to be a very intense kind of shimmery primer but actually it just does the exact same thing that the powders do. It gives you a beautiful lit from within glow that looks so radiant and dewy but there's no detectable shimmer, there's nothing glittery about it at all, it just looks so glowy and fresh and amazing. I don't know how they do it but everything from this range just wows me, it's amazing. I'm still yet to try the strobing highlighters though so if you guys have used them let me know if you like them. And then the other primer I've been using a lot recently um, and I've kind of been combining the two so I've been using this one first and then putting the Hourglass one on top. This is the Dior Skin Forever and ever wear Extreme Perfecting and Hold Makeup Base, SPF 20. That's a long name. I actually bought two things from the Dior range. I also got the foundation last month, and both of these I've been using a lot. I have to say I probably prefer the base. It's a really beautiful primer. It's just a very kind of standard, mattifying, long-lasting primer that keeps your makeup in place. Um, but the thing I like about it is that it has SPF in it. I think that's really great, so you don't have to double up on products. And also the fact that it's very thin and very lightweight. It's a very, very thin feeling primer for what it does for your skin, so I like that a lot. And then combined with the foundation, I think it's just your ultimate for really perfected, really flawless skin. This is a very full coverage foundation. I know it's not described as full coverage, I think they kind of say it's somewhere between medium and full, but for me this is super super full. It really covers everything and it is slightly heavy, but I think it's just the fact that I'm not used to wearing really heavy foundations, so this will give me a really really perfect super flawless base. It definitely looks like your skin in the way that it's slightly matte but also quite radiant. It just looks like natural skin, which I think is quite an amazing feat for a full coverage foundation to do. And when I am after something a Bit lighter. I've also been using the NARS Velvet Matte Skin Tint. I can't believe I'm talking about two matte foundations and favourites because I hate matte skin. I really don't like it, but although both of these are matte foundations, they really don't look it, especially this one. It definitely is matte in the way that it sets and it looks very flawless on your skin, incredibly flawless for a kind of tinted moisturiser product, but there's something about this that, again, just has that really glowy, lit from within look. It looks so radiant, but at the same time, matte as well. And it also stays for a really long time too. It's a very breathable, very lightweight product, but it sticks around for a long time, so love this one as well. And then a few last little makeup bits. Kevin Aquan Sculpting Powder um, in the shade Light, and I have gotten so much use out of this. It's probably been my most used makeup product for the last couple of months. I've been using it on a daily basis, and that's not something I would ever normally do. I'm not a massive contour kind of person, but I have been since I found this. So if you are after a contour and you have very fair skin, or if you just want something super natural and super subtle, this is amazing. Together with that, I've been using the Charlotte Tilbury Contour Brush. Don't know why it took me so long to get one of these, but it's just the ultimate brush for contour. It's really beautifully tapered. It's just the right size to kind of fit in your cheekbone, for me anyway, it's just absolutely perfect, so you basically don't have to do any work with this, it does all the work for you. So a few last little mentions, um, the nail polish that I've been wearing actually constantly this month is from Essie, this is Saltwater Happy, this is a really pretty pastel blue, it's not super light, it's more of a kind of cornflower blue, but I really like it, I think it's very summery um, and really nice, so I'm kind of happy I dug that one out again. And then my final favourite, we are finally here at the end of the video, is actually a fragrance, and this this is from Diptyque. It's been a while since I got a new Diptyque fragrance, um, and actually a while since I actually used any of the ones I have, but I was having a little sniff around in Space and K, as you do, and I saw this one, and the smell of this is so beautiful. It's so vanilla-y, but not in a way that you'd expect vanilla to smell. I think I used to have an old Body Shop vanilla spray that I would use when I was younger, just all the time, and it kind of reminds me a little bit of that, but it's so 
deep and musky and really different, basically what you would expect from a Diptyque fragrance. I think it actually smells almost identical to the Diptyque Vanilla Candle, which is probably my favourite candle that they do. So if you like that one and you would love to have it in fragrance form, look no further. This is basically what this is. Vanilla is such a kind of summery scent anyway, um, but I think with that little bit of musk, a bit of deepness, it just makes it so interesting and kind of a bit more universal and all year round. So this has been my fragrance at the moment. I've been spraying this constantly and that is my final favorite. So that was either a very, very long favorites and congratulations to you for still being here or I just rambled that super quickly and we've actually been done in 10 minutes. So either way, I hope you enjoy watching this video. Let me know what your favorites were this month. I always really enjoy reading your comments about your favorite products. So leave those all down below. And also while you're here, don't forget to subscribe. I will see you again very soon for my next video. Actually probably sooner than you would expect. So keep an eye out on Wednesday for something that is coming up. I'm a little bit excited. I'm sure some of you guys might be able to guess. I'll give you a hint. Wednesday is June the 1st. So if you do guess, leave me a comment down below. But that is it for me today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all then. Bye.